Uh, in this video, we are going to talk about the concept of evolutionary trend along the development of the animal kingdom. So we know that the animal life evolved in, in the aquatic environment where the single cellular cells were, were formed that include very simple volvox like animals, amoeba like animals, paramecium or euglena and, and a few more and they are the only the few of the examples from those single cellular animals. But how come these single cellular animals have evolved to become a highly complex and intelligent organism like human beings or, or like mammals? So there is uh, nature working all the way along this developmental patterns. And this is this development or improvement or change in the complexity of the animal size, structure, shape and function and behavior is known as evolution, right? So along this evolutionary pathway, there, were, there are few common things which were present in all the animals and those things were built upon some early existing characteristics. So this is what we call the evolutionary trends, and in this video, I will going to I'm going to discuss that evolutionary trends. So first of all, the level of organization, if we see what that changes along the passage of the evolution. So what is the level of organization? So it basically tells you that number of the cells present in an organism and how they are organized, how they are performing their function. Have you ever heard the term division of labor? in the animal's body. So that comes under the level of organization. The more the division of the labor and the more the dependence of the cell on different cells, other cells, the more high organization of those cells is required. So starting with the simplest form of the cell organization, uh, we can see the example here, the paramecium. So this type of the organization where the cell is, where the animal is a single cellular, where there is organelles are doing their proper functions for the survival of the animals and the animal cell does not interact with the other cells to the extent that they are dependent on each other. This type of the interaction is called protoplasmic level of organization. So it means that each cell is independent uh, living organism which is responsible for its own food and its own protection and its own reproduction. And it has nothing to do or no dependence with the other organism presence. Right, so the, once the time passed, these organisms might have developed some mechanisms to interact with each other, with other, other unicellular organisms, and they formed a new level or a higher level of the cell organization that is called cellular level organization. Here, the concept of division of labor, labor originated where the cells, these many different cells of the animal body started to interact with each other, and they divided the functions to different groups of the cells. For example, in the Volvox that is here in this example, these these uh, these Volvox animals, they are multicellular uh, microorganisms where the cells have their proper functions to do. Some set of the cells were classified or were differentiated to perform respiration only, and some were responsible for reproduction only, right? But they do not, but they uh, were dependent on each other uh, but still responsible for their own food and on, on excretion, etc. So this type of the, the organization is called cellular level organization. Next step along the evolutionary trend, uh, evolutionary line or timeline is the origin of the tissues. These cells which were the first performing their individual functions but were responsible for their own food and everything and other, other life functions, then become more specialized to perform more specialized functions and they form the tissues. They arrange these cells into different layers. Instead of this being separated throughout the body, they accumulated into specific parts and they performed their specific functions and then they were fed or they were providing nutrients by the other or other cells within the animal's body which were taking benefit from these the functions of these cells. So uh, I will quote an example of the jellyfish where it has a nerve net within its body, you know. So the nerves, some of the cells or many cells were differentiated to become the nerve, uh, neural cells and they, they spread out within the body and they are interconnected to make a network of the nerves, right? And they sense, their only function is to make the sensory receptions. But these are 
fed and these are provided nutrition by the rest of the body. This type of the organization is called cell to tissue level organization and it is higher level than cellular level organization. With the passage of time when these uh, tissues becomes more organized and and multiple type of the tissues started interacting with each other to make one organ system organ within an animal's body. This is called the tissue to organ level organization. In uh, first time in the platyhelminthes, these uh, flat worms, you see the eye spots or you see the ganglion to pr process the inf sensory information. So these eye spots are basically the combination of multiple tissues which are responsible for sensing and responsible for detecting light. So they are uh, evolved as one organ. Similarly, the ganglion or the primary brain that that can be considered as another organ. So this type of the organization is higher. And finally, the highest level of the organization is the system level organization from organ to system level where these multiple organs, they interact with each other. They are connected to each other and they perform very uh, detailed and complex body systems and me uh, mechanisms such as elementary system or respiratory system or digestive system. If we take the digestive system, for example, there are many organs involved in the digestion, including liver, pancreas, uh, intestine, uh, stomach, right? So these are all different organs, but they are responsible for one main function of the body that is nutrition and digestion. So this type of the organization is present in the higher animals like in the mammals. Now in uh, to recap all these informations you see the level of organization is getting more complex as the animal is, be is becoming evolved and as the time is being passing right so this is what we are going to see in our course and in in, in the further lectures right so that was the first characteristic the second one is the cell specialization right so the with the passage of time the, as the animals become more and more complex they evolved to have more specialized cells to perform specific functions, right? Yes. When that animal has a system level organization, they have specialized cells for making this integumentary system. So these are epithelial cells that make the skin of the living uh, animals. Then they have some connective tissues that perform other functions, providing support and providing uh, Transport, transport of the nutrients and waste materials within the body like connective tissue, blood, bones. Then they have specialized muscular tissues which are capable of uh, stretching and, uh, and, and uh, pulling, they're pulling the body parts and the body skeleton to, to perform locomotory functions and providing proper shape and form to the body. And the nervous tissues are differentiated to sense the different uh, stimuli to react accordingly right so the cell specialization is increasing with the animal increasing if you see the sponges they do not have much of the cell specialization all the cells are uh, calcified and they have they have their own skeletal support and everything there but if you talk about the mammals they have all of these four different types of the cell tissues to perform their specific functions so with the time all this complexity in the specialization is increased then cephalization. Cephalization is basically the development of the head in, in one part of the body instead of having sensory organs scattered around the body. If you do, if you compare a jellyfish with an, with an earthworm or jellyfish with, with a, maybe a caterpillar, you will see a major difference and you can, you can um, think about the benefits of having a head. Jellyfish does not have a specific head all the sensory organs, uh, eye spots, sensory points, they are scattered along its its umbrella-like body, right? And they are connect, interconnected with the nerve net, right? But in, in the insects or in the higher animals, eye spots or eyes and the brains and all sensory inputs, they are focused and they are concentrated in the one part, it's the anterior part, and that part serves as the head of the animal. And this process is called cephalization. Now, what happens? because animal is always moving in one direction and if it has all this uh, sensory organs scattered in its body, it, it may sense some stimulus at some direction, but may, may miss most of the stimulus because their sensory organs are not on that right location. But if 
the body has a head, proper head. The animal is moving interiorly. It can feel and sense every change in the environment and the stimuli and can respond accordingly. Right. And, and secondly, it is very important to control all those sensory organs because the brain is also located in the uh, head region. So this is called cephalization. So in the early animals like in corals and jellyfish and hydra, there were no cephalization and later the cephalization started from uh, plate worms and then so on. Then uh, cell specialization also involves the production of the germ layers. The early animals does have only two germ layers. So they are diploblastic animals. They had only ectoderm and endoderm, the outermost layers and the innermost layer. And there was nothing in between. They were just apparent caramel cells that filled in their space. But with the time of the uh, development and, and evolution, this a third layer were introduced. That was the mesoderm. And this, these animals are now known as triploblastic animals. And with the development of these mesoderm and other characteristic evolved, that is called the production presence of uh, body cavity or coelom. And it has its own uh, significance. We'll discuss those significance in, in, in the next upcoming slides.